who was a pastor, and he heard a disturbance. Well, he went down to the basement, he turned the light on, and just for a millisecond, there was a little bit of shadow in the corner that just stayed longer, because he turned the light on. Darkness is just the absence of light. So when you turn light on, darkness has to leave. And there was just a little bit of, boom, that sent kind of a shiver through him. And he's like, oh, turned the light off and went back up and just said, ah, it's just you. Knowing that he wasn't going to give in to the fear. And he didn't. And he went back up and he wrote and he said nothing ever bothered him for the rest of the time. No way that this could be real, as this creature reached its hand out over my sister's chest and a blue mist came out. I remember just screaming for my mom and my dad. I lived next to a pretty big military base, and airplanes were always coming and going. However, it suddenly expanded and then shrunk back down to its original size, then zoomed off almost like a shooting star. Fourteen years ago, my family and I lived in a converted apartment for a mental health facility. At the time, my son was three and used to get nightly visitors in his room that would bother him daily. Welcome class. I'm your host, Mr. Zach Schlager, alongside me, my cohort in all things supernatural, Mr. Joel Jackson, and you are tuned in to Beyond the Bell Podcast. Welcome class. I'm your host, Mr. Zach Schlecker. Alongside me is my cohort in all things supernatural, Mr. Joel Jackson, and you are tuned in to Beyond the Bell podcast. Thank you, Zach, for that wonderful introduction, man. Today we are recording our second episode called The Church. It's about a series of experiences that Zach had while working at a church for about 10 years. Currently, we are recording in that same church, and we have some very special guests for our very special first episode. My pleasure to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Roberts. How are you guys? Wonderful. Thank you for having us on today. We're great. But before we start, press this video's like button and leave a positive comment. And if you really like this episode and want to help the show, please share it with your friends and family on your social media accounts. And if you had a story or particular experience and want to be a guest on this show, you can contact us at emailing joel.jackson at beyondthebellpodcast.org. That's joel.jackson at beyondthebellpodcast.org, or visit our website at www.beyondthebellpodcast.org. Finally, if you have joined the Facebook group page but haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that as soon as you can. Now, Zach, describe what you were doing before working at the church and how that led you to being here right now. So my background is in special education, and I was fortunate enough to work for a private clinical school here in Fort Worth. Around that time, children would go to the school up until a certain age, and they would age out. Back then, in the early 2000s, there wasn't a lot of facilities for children with special needs that they could go to maintain like their functional living skills, their, their self-help skills, and their academics. And at that time, I was getting a little burnt out of that clinical setting and met a wonderful family who I, am, I worked with, and, and they were... Uh, parents uh, and their student attended there and he phased out. Lo and behold, we ended up working together first in this little apartment. And it was going well, but the environment itself was sketchy to say the least. Mm -hmm. And um, his grandparents were actually members of this church. And so they presented this idea summer of 2013 and we all kind of took a field trip up here. That's where I, I got first introduced to Sharon. She uh, took us on a tour of the grounds many, yes. many years ago, right? <laughs> yes. A long, long, long time yes. ago. Little did I know. Little did we know. <laughs> um, and, and that's kind of what led us to just really work down the hallway. Mm -hmm. Now, what specific features were you looking <clears throat> for at a site to work with your uh, student? Well, there, there was a lot of variables that had to go into play. One was, since we were working on functional living skills, did they have a space to allow us to practice cooking or maybe even shaving or even setting up shop like a dentist's office? But to that, were they also patient people? Were they kind people? Because students 
with particular needs sometimes make a lot of vocalizations, a lot of extra noise. And, and some people sign on, like, yeah, yeah, you can come on. And then we get there and we're either way too loud or too intrusive, but, but not so here. As soon as we arrived on campus, it was like these, these people accepted us as their family. Um, they accepted my student as one of their own. We're never afraid to give him a job to see if he could complete it. And that was, that was detrimental to his growth and his, to his learning. That's awesome. So what was your like, kind of like initial like, feelings when you walked into the building? Do you feel anything weird or peculiar? No, no. Um, everything was great. Everything was fine. Wasn't, you know, on my radar. The, the work that you do in terms of the special ed work that I did relies heavily on, on scientific analysis. So walking into a building, it's not like, oh, I feel the presence here. It was get to work. Let's, let's get going. Let's get the, the ball rolling with the curriculum because we had to design everything from scratch. So for the first year, everything was, was really normal. When did it not turn normal? When did it not turn normal? Oh. 2014, and it's the video I pulled off my computer. I came in, we got here at 8, and we, and we tried to mimic school hours. So 8 to 3 every single day, same location, same building, because consistency is imperative to progress. So 10 o'clock came, I had to run down to their main office to make a copy with my buddy in tow. And we came back, and down the hall, they had a children's nursery set up, and I started to hear this static noise that I hadn't heard prior. So I walk over to look, and lo and behold, this walkie-talkie that was completely dead, left off the charger the night before, was going insane, like emitting loud static. And I'm like, okay, this is new. This is different. So that pinged me for the first time, but I played it off. I was like, this is just like maybe like a solar flare, trying to rationalize whatever I could to make m myself feel a little bit better. Because at that time, Mr. Roberts, I wasn't a Christian yet. So right. I guess you could say my soul was very up for much for the vying at that point in time. So it, it definitely caused me to look, for sure. That's good because the soul is the battleground. Mm -hmm. You know, we're spiritual beings that last for eternity or made for eternity that have a soul, which is our mind, our will, and emotions mm -hmm. that are living in this fleshly body. So the battleground is always the soul. Yeah. For sure. So what was the first big experience? Oh, I think once my buddy started to take notice of some things, he was always like my little radar. Being that he was nonverbal, he was really sensitive to everything around him. So just like you and I, we can have a conversation. We have headphones on. But we could take these off. We could still have a functional conversation and tune out the environment around us. Everything for him was turned up to 11. So every sound, every feel, everything. And we started to get some electronic phenomena coming in the building that would kind of set him off that maybe he would look in a direction. The first time I think I started to like notice was like, okay, this is a little different, was he was trying to pull me into the restroom, which at that age, that time and place, we don't teach potty training. That program was already done and passed a long time ago at the clinical mm -hmm. school that we were at. But I'm like, okay, this is weird. Like you're like gonna dislocate my shoulder. Cause he's, he's a big guy now and he was big back then trying to yank me into the bathroom and he kept looking in, in one specific area, almost like, you know, when your cats or dogs look at that one corner in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the part of your house and their eyes get real big. He was kind of doing that like, fixated on this one spot so I just took my phone out and I was like okay I don't know if you see something took a picture took another one and lo and behold pictures normal the next picture has like this streak that comes across it I'm like okay well that's dust that's hair that's something else but he was just fixated on things we had one I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because this is the one that freaked me out the most he came to school he would have his iPad he would have string that he would twirl. And the night before, I think Mr. Roberts had hired some help to come in and, and maybe do some work, like overnight around here. And the guy said, well, when I get to the women's restroom, like immediately I feel like somebody's following me down this hallway. I think Sharon texted me that the night before. I was like, that's kind of weird. The very next day, a student arrives, runs out of his car because he was always really excited to get to school, runs down the hallway, stops at the threshold, looks up and down, and proceeds to sidestep around in a circle. 
dude. And it's weird. Yeah, he he sidesteps around in a circle and then bolts for the classroom like, I don't care. I just want to get to my VHS player because he would bring videos and his iPad to watch movies on. And I'm right behind him, and I'm like, now I have to follow through this. So I kind of did the same thing. I'm like, I'm not gonna walk. I'm not gonna walk through the middle of that. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you just sidestep to to get through it. Oh, that's, that's that's creepy, man. Did you notice any type of like or hear any banging or tapping? Yeah, um, working here. Early on, when we started being responsible for safety, and it was me and him primarily in this building from eight to three by ourselves. The front doors are glass, and this building is drafty, so it would make a lot of noise. But they would pound, like ferociously pound, like somebody was locked out. And I got really, really frustrated one day and. Leaning again into more of the analysis part of my work, I started to graph how many times I'm getting up because I thought somebody up here, I'm brand new, I don't really know anyone. Maybe it's Sharon. She has, she has a robot knee now, but before that, I thought, I thought, you know, maybe she's hobbling all the way up here just, just yanking my chain. Um, but I, I tally marked the frequency of it. I got up 12 times one day, in one day. 12 times. 12 times. And it's it's disruptive to the work, right? So we're getting in the groove and then ba 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 ba. I'm like, okay, who's up there now? Uh, and I'd get up there, and no one would be up there. Or it was the crows. The crows. The crows are creepy. I did a lot of research on crows for this episode, and I found out in Western culture, they're viewed as bad omens. But like in Native American culture, they're viewed as actually spiritual messengers. They're also viewed, determining on the number of crows you see, there's a different like meaning to it. Like if you see one crow, it's supposedly like a good message. Two, it's good, but more and more you see, it gets worse. And when you send that video to me, there's five crows at the door. And that meant like a really bad like sickness and illness is around the area. And those crows, they were going at that door, man. They were yeah. they were banging it was at scary. it. Yeah. It was it was creepy. They man. would they would do that uh, on the office door. Yes. Right? Yes. And then they would do that in any glass door. I mean, they would, like Mr. Robert said in the very beginning, I mean, they would literally leave blood on the door. You want to elaborate yeah. on that, sir? So, yeah, I was, we were perplexed over why there was blood on and around the door. We just made the door where you could see out the door, but you can't see in the door. So it's a, like a one way kind of mirror on the outside. Well, these crows can see the reflection. Well, I didn't know what was, what it was. I didn't know if, there was an animal that killed something in front of the door, but it kept continually coming back. And finally, one day I was driving past the office and I looked and I just saw that one crow and it just kept continually just fighting its reflection. Man, God just told me right then, see, Philip, look at that. That right there is what happens. People fight something that's really not there. And just seeing that, it, it lets you know that the eeriness goes away, that something Spiritual, 100%. If anything that affects your mind, your will, your emotions, it's a spiritual issue. What is that's causing it? Because the enemy wants to create fear. It says, fear not or have no fear 365 times in the Bible. That's not a coincidence because the enemy operates off of fear. And these demonic forces and these fallen angels, these, these spirits know that you operate by fear. Just like when you said you were going to walk down the hall and you saw your student walk around, well, you walked around. You walked through those things. When you walk through those things, they see that you have the power over those. Second Timothy 1.7 says, God did not give you a spirit of fear and timidity, but power, love, and a sound mind. So you have the power, you have the love, you have the sound mind. He didn't give you fear and timidity. If God didn't give it to you, who gave it to you? Well, that's the enemy. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says the God of this world is Satan and he blinds the minds of people that can't see the true glory of God. Once again, our mind, our soul, he blinds the soul. He's called the father of lies in John 8, 44. So he's blinding your mind. Now he's going to feed you lies and make you walk around things that aren't really there because it's his cronies, his little minions that are doing the work. His goons. That's it. <laughs> no, Philip, I mean, I love that story because I remember when we were visiting back early in this fall and you mm -hmm. told us that story. And la late last night I was working on the script. My wife had gone to bed and I'm working by our this window that leads into our backyard. And I was getting kind of tired and all of a sudden I hear like something like bang in the backyard and, and stuff like collapsing and, and I'm being freaked out. And I said, oh man, oh man, what's going on? And I said, 
then I remembered back to your message, and it said, you know, that's the enemy trying to distract you. That's it. You know, stay focused, that's get it, it done. That's it. There was a pastor <clears throat> that retired after about 47 years in the pastorate, and he was in Colorado writing his memoirs, and it was just him. He was in the mountains in this cabin. It was amazing, and he heard a disturbance. Well, he went down to the basement, he turned the light on, and just for a millisecond, there was a little bit of shadow in the corner that just stayed longer, because he turned the light on. Darkness is just the absence of light, so when you turn light on, darkness has to leave, and there was just a little bit of, boom, that sent kind of a shiver through him, and he's like, oh, turned the light off and went back up, and just said, ah, it's just you, knowing that he wasn't going to give in to the fear, and he didn't, and he went back up, and he wrote, and he said nothing ever bothered him for the rest of the time. We have the power of love and the sound mind. The only way he gets it is fear and timidity. You show fear, now you just relinquish, say, your sound mind, your self-control. Now he takes that. Now he's going to take your love and your self-control. And he just sort of, like, has your control. Now he's going to just control you. And it can just take over people. You see these people that have these possessions in their homes and these things like this that really just, they can't, I mean, just like, ah, they're just operating out of fear because it immediately... It's just you relinquish the control, the power. That we are human. So it is very, one hundred percent. He knows, <laughs> and he knows that. You ask a lot of people, it's like, well, who's the opposite of God? They'll say Satan. Come on, no, Satan is a created being who was cast out of heaven, and a third of the angels are cast out with him. Those are the fallen angels. Those are the demons. See, Satan is a created being. It is finished. Was Jesus' last words on the cross? It is finished. It's done. He knows his beginning and he knows his end. And so his main objective is to grab the soul of other people. Keep them away from the eternal destination of being with God. Now they're very good at it because there's a lot of people that That's have it. those mm-hmm. demons That's in it. them. They, they're, and they're, they have their own vision of what is God. Mm-hmm. And, and it's sad and that's, that's our job is to just pursue Christ, love people, make disciples. Make sure you share that that with other people. And speak truth and love and walk through these things. Is it real? 100%. It's real. Feelings are real, but they're not reliable. You can't rely on your feelings. You can't walk back, whoa, whoa, whoa. keep going. Like you just said the other night, you heard that noise and you walked on by it, didn't get disturbed by it. Mm-hmm. Because why? God's word never comes back void. If you believe one word in the Bible, you have to believe them all. Because it's, it's the inerrant word of God. Everything in there is true. and All the promises, everything he says in there is true. And that's by faith. You're reading it. You know, <laughs> greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Who's this world belong to? Satan, the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And so that's what gives us the power to walk through it. Does he try to operate by fear and timidity? 100% of the time. We had a gentleman or an employee that was here that was let go and he left through the front glass doors and all of a sudden all these black flies were on the glass door i i mean i witnessed that myself and there was a certain element of you know evilness or something he was very uneasy to be around yes yeah. he was very yeah. uncomfortable mm-hmm. yeah. and so that and the crows were also there mm-hmm. but the flies, I was just like blown away. Well, I think that also was the time period that a lot of the electronic phenomena was really kicking mm-hmm. off. Lights, especially. Lights. Yeah. Uh, we, subsequently, when we first started, like two weeks into to me starting this, this role here, they got robbed. <laughs> and the inside joke was that me and my student are selling the equipment, you know, now on the <laughs> on the black market. Yeah. <laughs> you made a lot that day. Yeah. Um, but the, they had a mixing board for for church, and their levels had to be all programmed manually. Um, and I, I, I would make a habit. My student was always the best conversationalist, being that, you know, he would rather watch his YouTube videos. And so we would make time. We'd go visit Sharon, and, and she was like, oh, I have a story for you. I was like, oh, what's going on? She's like, they're getting really frustrated up here that they have to, right before the service, reset their mic levels because all of their preset settings that they set the day before now have been changed. 
I was like, that's why. They were always scrambled. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a constant. It's yeah. a constant thing. Mm-hmm. And um, do you remember your daughter-in-law's experience when she was the director down that hallway? <laughs> that was just when, when your daughter-in-law worked as director and the, and the nursery was down here. Yes. And she came in late at night. And, and you had the automatic rockers. And she bought some new toys. She sets them on the ground. And her son was toddler, like still in diapers, you know, carrying them around. Sets the toy down, getting things ready for again for Sunday. Goes back into the room, which is now a maintenance closet. The electronic cradles are swinging. Yeah. And the new toy that she bought is now chiming off yeah. and going off. And, and I was like, that's wild. That That's just, that's beyond me. Like, I don't have any explanation for it. So I'm going to be a knucklehead, and I'm going to throw my phone in there, just click voice record, and just see if something messes with it. And that's where the first audio piece of audio I ever captured came through, and you hear it through the, the clock ticks. It's like one, two, three, and on the fourth tick, you hear this voice go, Mommy. And I'm like, what? What was that? Mm-hmm. Because we're in a different room. No one else is in there. The lights are completely off. So what's going on? And you were talking about fear. Hoo-wee. What? Yeah. Right, Hoo-wee. Right. A lot of fear. <laughs> right, right. And, that's, and that is, is when, you, when you have discernment, mm-hmm. when you feel fear and timidity, understand that God didn't give it to you. So your discernment is automatically, this is the enemy doing something. Because a lot of people want to think that that's a child that has been passed away, that is looking for its mom and mm-hmm. dad. Listen, the Bible is very clear. When a, To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. You're either going to go to one or two places. You'll go to heaven and be present with the Lord, or you're going to go to Hades. That's it. There's no, or, or you're going to get stuck in this suspension and you're going to be here. And so when you see these things like this, it's it's demonic forces, it's demons, fallen angels that are uh, trying to affect and try to produce the effect that it's desiring, is, which is fear. Mm-hmm. Also, fallen angels do that. Well, de- angels do that. I mean, I can repeat many things in my life that I've seen living behind a cemetery here in this town. There was a tombstone right on the other side of my fence. A little young kid named Christian died at three years old. And I got behind the fence and cleared up the tombstone and cleared it off. And you can tell no one's ever visited it. Took a toothbrush and, you know, cleared out all that. You can see all the letters and everything. I put a little white picket fence around it. And I, I could see it. Now, to me, that was like I was doing something to, to try to produce a, a good feeling. Like, this is sad that this child died at three and no one ever comes to visit this child. Well, angels will create an environment of like a blessing and my son was about a year and a half old and he was we just put him down in his bed took all the toys and everything out of his bed and it's he's still small enough to where it's like all the way down so he can't climb out of his bed 15 minutes later we hear him playing we go back in there all the stuffed animals and toys are back in his bed with him now at the time i wasn't walking with christ now did i I, I knew Christ. I, I had a relationship with Christ, but it was, it was to the point where I was, I was an, I'm an immature Christian still. And so I'm sitting there thinking, oh, there's a ghost in here. There's a ghost in here. And then I start, I start leading into, instead of going, hey, look, that's, how do you know that's not an angel taking care of my, my son? Because mm-hmm. my dad died in Vietnam when I was two. I mean, how do I know that these angels aren't just watching me? Because it says, Jesus said that he'll be the father to the fatherless. And that means he's my father, and he's just watching over me. You know, now that I'm older and I see these things, it's like I understand a discernment of those things. But you see the activities here that you experienced. You know, I can walk in here. I don't care if it's two thirty in the morning, storming really bad or whatever. I'm the only one on campus. I walk in here. I'll camp out in the hallway because you don't operate by fear and timidity. I have the power. I have the love. I got the sound mind. And if you just know, you won't re- relinquish it. Joel volunteers to do that. I will. I'll do it. <laughs> Joel will set you up a little. Just a, a real there. cozy nook. Yeah. He has all he needs. Leave, I'm leave. a sucker to peer pressure, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff, though. Yeah. But, like, yeah. you have to remember, 
Ephesians 6, 10, 11, and 12. That's on my mirror at home. It's on every one of my screensavers. It says the final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You put on the full armor of God so you can withstand the schemes of the devil because we do not fight flesh and blood enemies. You're fighting evil rulers and dark powers and evil spirits in this heavenly realm, and that's what you're fighting. Mm -hmm. And if you realize that, okay, it's not scary because they have no power. They've been defeated. The Bible says in Revelation, it says, Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil sends his beast with wrath because he knows his time is short. He knows his time is short, and his only intention is to steal, kill, and destroy it. To keep you away from coming to a, re a lasting relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. Steal your joy, steal your peace. If you're saved, he can get you to sit down and shut up and sit over in the corner in a fetal position and to be an ineffective Christian. Some people get saved and they march up to the gates of heaven and pitch their little tent and can't wait till the, the gates open. Well, that's not what we're, we're called to do. We're called to put a backpack on. We're called to be light in this world. If we need your light in this world, we need to go down to the darkness. Let's go down to the doorstep in the pits of hell. That's where we need to be and be light in this dark world and let people see that light shining in you. We're going to call Mr. Mr. Roberts Trapper now. <laughs> Trapper. He's, 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 he's wise beyond his years. Yeah, he is. Do you I just, also I've... remember the young girl that came mm -hmm. um, and visited. We have you know, crosses on the hill and a little bench. And the young girl that was clearly, clearly disturbed with demonic. Well, I've had many conversations with her. Mm -hmm. That was that was one of the most visual, I think, demonic possessions I've, I've ever seen. Uh, I, or I, the I, only one, probably. I witnessed her because, again, I would get up and, and make hourly rounds <laughs> while we were here, just make sure, you know, we had, we had some what we would call lake flakes uh, <laughs> roll up here, and and they would try to sell us like old, st you know, dry frozen steaks. You know, we like, we didn't want any part of that. <laughs> yes, yeah, four hundred for two dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, crust under the fingernails yeah. that had been there for a little bit. We're like, I'm not buying anything out of this. You got to watch out for the steak salesman because like I remember I was living in Dickinson, Texas for a yeah, while. Yeah. And um, I was just by myself, and I just hear a knock on, on my door. And I open the door, and it's this guy selling steaks, like in a, in a freeze dry, you know, freeze, mm -hmm. you know, wrap thing. And then he says, Hey, do you like steaks? And I said, uh, And before I could say a word, he just walks into my house. Oh my gosh. And he wouldn't say no. I mean, like, he wouldn't take no yeah, for an answer. Yeah, yeah. And I physically had to push him out of my house. He yeah. said, Dude, like, I'm not buying any steaks from you. And then it just. You gotta watch out for them. It's so. a hard no for me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like no. like a steak with a side of meth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like that's methed up. Yeah, methed up. Yeah. <laughs> but so the girl you're talking about, though, I've had many conversations with her. I mean, my first conversation was about her in the parking lot. I just happened to pull up in the car, sitting here by itself, and I just started communicating with her. I asked her a couple times, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" And finally, she turned and looked at me and she goes, "I'm fine." I just, I'm like. No, you're not. No, you're not okay. So I got out of my truck and went over there, and I made sure I asked her what's her what 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 is your name. And I, I wanted a female's name, and so when she told me her name, then I and then I started communicating to her, prayed immediately, and the communication took a totally different turn to just her needs and her wants, and I mean, there's. There's so many people that walk through this world that that have a void in their life and the enemy can take over that and possess that. The scary part to me though about her was just her just her actions out there. She would just have this creepy run and she would run and she would dig, 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 dig and put something and bury it and then, you know, throw herself on the crosses. Yeah. And I was just mesmerized. I mean, we were. Zach, you sent me a recording over it. Yeah. And I didn't believe all this until I saw it for myself. And yeah. that recording of her was the scariest thing of all. Oh, when she started well, body contorting. Yeah, yeah. Like she started twisting. Was, um, and, and my camera lens would not focus on her. It would for half a second. Mm -hmm. And then she would move. And it would not just like it would not unfocus. The camera would jump 
down. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how did it get down? I'm not even pointed there. Yeah. I need this Ooh. because I need to know if I need yeah. to call the cops. Like, yeah. do we yeah. have somebody yeah. with like a mental health problem here on the grounds that, that you know, Mr. Roberts needs to be aware of. But, yeah. you know, we had that. And going back to like the good and the bad, there the most profound piece of evidence I have, I think I've shared with everyone is the flashlights in the hallway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what I, what I find, I go back and forth about it because at the time, lo and behold here, and I totally forgot it. I knew I would, but I, pull, I pulled my Bible out before I came here and I, I pulled this little crusty card out. It's about <laughs> pamphlet long. It's, it's ancient now, but I was one that never responded well to your typical evangelism. Like, if you're going to come up and even just mention Jesus, I'm going to shut you down. She, Miss Roberts, weaseled her way into this old grouch's heart (laughs) and and slid this, like, little pamphlet. Because at the time in my life, all the circumstances, all the things that I was going Mm -hmm. through, the, the emotional struggles and all that, and I still have it. And it's, you know the feelings that you're feeling in the Bible verses that you can find them in. And, right. and I still implement that. And she was one of the more profound steps in, in me becoming a Christian. Right. Mr. Roberts here, he brings it to a whole nother level, but I know myself <laughs> back then mm-hmm. would have toned that out. I'm like, y'all, Yo, you're coming at me too hard, dog. I'm just going to, but <laughs> yeah. she just was a slow, like a, like a drip of water. She was slow and steady and just, <laughs> and, and there, there I was, you know, I found myself, but going back to that video, I remember I was like, I just, I was so hungry now spiritually that I started to bring my Bible to work and I would read it on my lunch breaks. And that's exactly what happened when I got touched. I was, I don't remember the book that I was in, but I had it open and we had these small little desk that we would operate on. And I was elbows on the desk about back <laughs> off the chair, about a good 45. And I felt what I could only feel like four fingers press in the middle of my back. And I know Behind me is my chair. Behind me, that is the maintenance closet. What on earth? And for a split second, that fear took over. Like, why was that? And who was that? Yeah. And run down there. But I think back, like, maybe maybe it wasn't bad. Maybe it was something good, like like patting me on the back. Like, you're on the right track, bud. Yeah. What were you reading? Because I was wondering, maybe it's trying to stop you from reading something significant that could have. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember the book that I was in. I want to say it was Ephesians because that was one that I was like really That's, into at that time. See, you're getting close to it because it could have been Ephesians 6, 10, 11, or 12. Yeah. So I just quoted for you. Yeah. And I, I'm, know, I'm pretty sure. Know. I mean, it was it was, it was was New Testament related and it was one of the books on the churches, but I, I want to say it was Ephesians. Memory's fuzzy now. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you're talking about, gosh, already six years ago. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. I mean... To preface, nine years here went by like that. And people, you know, I talk about, you know, the experiences, and it's, it's really, people gravitate to that a lot. But, you know, this isn't a place that it happens every day. This isn't a place that, you know, you're going to see a shadowy mist form, and, and it's like a residual type of thing. It's some days you walk in, it's totally fine. You're like, oh, got to turn the AC on. It's a little warm and muggy, a little swampy back here. <laughs> There are other times when you walk in and you're like, okay, there's somebody else in here with me today. Mm-hmm. And, and the air feels thick. They had, we would always take off on like, they would do the, the poles out here, or they would also, you know, obviously being a church, they would operate and, and hold weddings and funerals. And so any one of those events, we would take off because again, we're still down the hallway, but we produced a lot of noise, a lot of vocalizations. I just didn't want to interrupt any service or potentially interweave by it by accident uh you know us coming to use the kitchen um and so we would take off but un- unfortunately there was one day where we couldn't that was also the day they had two funerals in the same week and i go into the restroom here one was for a young lady and the other one was for an older member of the church that had passed away and i go into the restroom here i'm only male on campus at this point and and everything was in the other building Uh, completely closed off to us but I walk in I'm like what's that noise and not only was the sink faucet on full blast all of the toilets and the urinals were flushing and I was like well I'm gonna hold it for a little bit (laughs) or I'm gonna knock on the women's room make sure no one's in there because I gotta go but it, it was just it was so unique man 
And do you remember when they did hold the one of the elections here and they came to get the boxes after months yeah months i mean they, they left were the poll months. boxes here forever they c- and could have they reused it for the next election it was that long <laughs> what did the guy say to you though that was well um on on fridays it was it was me and my student up here alone on property so it was like everything was heightened already because i'm like okay any car that pulled into this parking lot i was like <laughs> We have to have an exit plan. Let's go <laughs> get to the chopper now. You know what I mean? And so uh, Ms. Roberts gave me a heads up, like, you know, hey, they're going to come pick up the, the poll booths now. And, you know, for a stranger, quote, unquote, I had access to a lot of these buildings. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem. I can let them in. Knew where the lights are. Back up. Guy knocks. We meet him at the door. Open it up. And I'm like not even 12 steps in into the big main sanctuary and the lights are off. And, like, I'm a small guy already, right? <laughs> it's not going to take anything for some dude to just pick me up and just run away. And I was listening to a lot of true crime podcasts. <laughs> and so this guy goes, oh, how come, like, churches, you can feel the darkness? And I thought, well, that's a weird statement to make as we're walking together <laughs> in the dark. And so I run ahead. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's pretty creepy. Turn the lights on. He goes, no, 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 no. Let me tell you what's creepy. And he shares this story about his dad being like a Vietnam vet. And he's like, creepy is when the children of the village go silent before the gunfire. And of course, it's me. It's him. This dude's like (laughs) 6'5", jacked. And I'm like, this, they're going to find my little nude body stuffed (laughs) in a trash can behind property the next morning. Like, I feel like, how do I, how do I text my wife inadvertently? Like, I love you, baby. It's, it's done. Game over. And so I would like to say it stopped there, but we, we go, we, we lead out. And the property, like right here, there's like a little ramp. And it, it's not big enough to see over buildings, but you can kind of get a sense of the vastness of this piece of property that we're on. And it's back then before the Dollar General moved in and all that. It was, <laughs> it's majestic. And, and this was in the morning. So beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah, serene. It was just, you know, just that crispness. And you're like, oh, it's a nice day. And this guy looks over me. He goes, yeah. You're going to be hurting. And then, boom, there we go. The heart rate ticks up again. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean hurting? And he takes his hand. He looks at the property. And he waves it over the property. He's like, you're going to be hurting when you lose all of this. And kind of motions over the property. And I'm looking at him like, what are you talking? And he gets close. And he leans in. He's like, because the storm's coming. <laughs> and he was like, well, see you later. And he like, takes the boots and drives off. And I'm just like, pulls out my phone. Text my students, mom. Can we can we pick up early today? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. So he he's he was thinking that you were a part of leadership of the church. Yeah. And so that was somebody who did not have a relationship with Christ. Wrong guy, man. They're, they're, they live in darkness. Yeah. The Bible tells us that darkness hates the light. Hates the light. Why? Because mm-hmm. darkness is just the absence of light. Darkness can never come and go, oh, I'm, t- I'm so dark, it's, the light's never going to work. And so what they try to do is they try to just scare you with, and that wasn't him. That wasn't that, that young man. That was the enemy trying to put fear. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it worked. Well, it, 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 it listen did. To me, but it as, did. As, as you, as, as that day. Do you think about this, though, as a child that's one or two years old? You can scare a little kid pretty easy. Yeah, no, I was definitely one one year old. <laughs> right, right. But what I'm saying in your spiritual walk, but yeah. as you start to understand what are your weapons, what are your defenses, what is the full armor of God. That's why Ephesians 6, 10, 11, 12 tell you, man, you put on the full armor of God so you mm-hmm. can withstand the schemes of the devil. You put on the full armor. You get out there and you walk it, understanding that the battleground's here. If I'd have been here that day, I'd have been like, man, I'd just start praying. Because when you turn on light, darkness can't stay. It's just the absence of light. It has to leave. You can't study darkness. You can't go, hey, it's 22 dark in there right now. It's going to be 89 dark tonight. Makes no sense. You can study light, luminous, wattage, candle power. Same thing with love. Anything other than love is just the absence of love. You interject love and everything else has to leave. Jesus says he's love. He says he's light. It also says he's the fire from above. It's never really cold it's just the absence of heat and so the cold will try to come in and do what it wants to do but the heat will never be able to overtake be overtaken 
love can never be overtaken and light can never be overtaken but the darkness the hate the cold will always try to do its part to try to take over but it can't mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And but, we had, oh, but sorry, it operates in fear it does it brings fear immediately because that's called a spirit of fear mm-hmm. okay that that's like if you see a train coming at you that's that's physical fear jump out the way mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that's get out of the way but if you are okay and all of a sudden you just have the spirit of fear come over you, realize, okay, this is a spiritual issue, 100% of it. It can only be taken care of spiritually. Nothing physically you can do. Mm-hmm. Spiritually take care of it. To give you discernment, I would just said, hey, let's pray. And just start praying. Yeah. <laughs> because wherever two or three guys that in his, in his name, he's going to be in the midst. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're here or not, let's pray. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's being strong in the Lord and his mighty power, not mine. I can't do nothing. That's why he's the bulldog, man. Like he, he's just his. his I love his yeah. yeah, yeah. That's I guess my my title would be sheepdog. Yeah, you know, just I'm just a sheepdog. I'm I'm a shepherd, but I'm, I'm sheepdog. I'm just be attuned. Boom. <laughs> put, put that put that on a shirt and sell that. Right. That's now. what I'm talking about. Put, put that, that on a cracker. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know who didn't have fear? My buddy. Mm-mm. Never showed fear. Mm-mm. As much as I was like, my heart's over there pumping. Over there, oh. <laughs> we had one down the hallway, and the fire alarm was going off, like like true smoke detection. <laughs> bah, 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 mm-hmm. bah. Five times stops, six times stops, and she called me in the morning and asked if I ever wanted a soda. And she heard it on the phone. I was like, it just keeps going off. She's like, okay, I'll, call, I'll get the maintenance man to go up there and, and, and take it off. He um comes in and he's like oh is it just out of batteries like no this has been going off all morning like intermittent chirping he takes the battery out puts it back up there it goes off i'm like i know there's not a battery in there (laughs) now and we're going to lunch and boy he's he's my boy was ready snack time lunch lunch time feeding (laughs) time he was on time all the time and that fire alarm was cranking off (laughs) and he just scowled down the hallway and on command on his scowl that thing goes silent for the rest of the day yeah, That's he so just good. he just scowled just... at it, man, in his best like scowl. He had the best scowl faces too. <laughs> he, did. Yeah. he was chapped. He was like, "Hey, you cut that out," <laughs> and uh, and then it stopped, yeah. man. It wasn't messing around. And there was one time where, you know, we were we had to move rooms temporarily, and it shared this room shared uh, an office with like a counselor, and I'm filling out paperwork, and I have really poor vision anyway, so I thought, oh, my eyes are just going, but I see this like firecracker. In, in, in the environment come mm-hmm. out start on his left shoulder kind of like slink behind him and go out the door and we were the door alignment faced what I would call the creepy hallway and so if I <laughs> sat back I could had a direct line of sight so I always made sure to set up because again uh, I wasn't there yet right, I was right, like I was like right. I don't want to look at it I don't want to see right. it and um I watched him and he did like this shoulder roll like like the willies and then yeah. again he just kind of goes ah, 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 and just kind of <laughs> Scout, scout its way out of there, but it was wild times. That's wild times. Stuff. Wild times. Yeah, he used to call me Fellowship Hall. Fellowship Hall. <laughs> Fellow, Fellowship Hall. Fellowship Hall. Yeah, because my and first name sounds a little bit. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Microwave. microwave. I don't know where you got that. From. Well, you know, we're, we're learning words, and so the first sound. The first phonetic sound, he would default to his already mastered word. So, yeah. you know, he knew mm. Fellowship Hall is where we had lunch and his favorite place to be and you know we got to the and fill up and the fellowship hall yeah automatically <laughs> and then we you know this was always miss sharon because i always went by mr zach and um prompting her name i said this is mm, and he goes microwave and i'm like <laughs> he was always yeah. always always That's thinking about food stuff. always thinking about well Go ahead and close us out. Uh, Mr. Roberts, you are a deacon here, correct, sir? I'm, I'm uh, one of the elders. An elder, an elder. Why don't you do what you do best and just close us out in prayer? Oh, yeah, definitely. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I, I pray that you would just move mightily in all of anybody that is hearing this, Lord. pray you would just reveal yourself to them in such a mighty way. Lord, may we always walk according to your will, not our will, but your will. And Lord, I pray that you would just protect each one from the enemy. Lord, you say, you taught us in your word, you said, when you pray, pray like this. And it says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Mr. and Mrs. Roberts being our first guest. First guest. Yeah. First time. Well, that was, you, you said that whenever y'all were just talking. Y'all were like, man, you're set up here. You're going to be my first guest. I'm yeah. like, man, I'll do whatever I need to do. But I love it. That's good stuff, man. I love it. Class dismissed. Class dismissed.